Welcome, everybody, to the Traditions Going Vertical podcast. I'm Mike Greenlay, your host, and co-hosting with me again, Eric Hendrickson, president of Tradition Mortgage, and our special guest today, Paul Grabo, executive vice president of Robert Thomas Homes. And uh, some of the topics that we're going to try and cover today uh, are going to be naturally home building and and where that is and, and how the market's looking with that, but also a very important thing in home building and so many other things, and that's supply chain and supply chain management. So, um, gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Uh, Paul, uh, we've, we've visited before. It's uh, good to have you back. Just, uh, just why don't you give us a quick overview of how things are looking right now? Um, it's probably been at least six months uh, or more since we've uh, talked, and obviously you were in the thick of things back then, and uh, you probably still are, but it might might look differently. So why don't you give us a quick little uh, breakdown of how things are going? Thanks, Mike. Good to see you guys again. Um, well, since six months ago, I would say things have improved from a supply chain standpoint. There's still your pinch points that are really hard to avoid. Uh, last time we talked, I, I joked about appliances uh, as being, you know, we had all these temporary appliances and, you know, we were going to have a tent sale someday. The problem is, is no one goes back to get them. So now yeah. somebody just has an extra garage fridge. It's pretty <laughs> funny. But at any rate, we, we improved our situation there by going with a different company. We, we moved away from GE because we just struggled and struggled and struggled. And everyone, every home I went into, there was always something missing. And it was so really frustrating to me because it's like, well, look, the rest of the house looks pretty good. We're missing an appliance. Here's this, you know, we're in a million dollar home. This should be this really big, nice looking fridge. And we have a little dorm fridge in the place. So it was just a, really a frustrating deal. But appliances and have improved lumbers improved there's always kind of something that the gyp sheathing became uh we just couldn't get it mm -hmm. so you have to find ways to substitute and the lumber prices have improved a little bit uh our, our biggest problem right now has been you're on some allocations with different things we're on allocations for roofing and and windows just really continue to be an industry-wide struggle um you can just drive around any development not just one of ours but uh you can go go through some of the nationals too, and you can see a whole bunch of homes built and just missing windows all, all over. So, but we do feel that improving too. We actually uh, black windows are extremely popular right now. They have been for a while. And we get these black laminated windows from Hayfield, and they ran out of the laminating material where they just didn't have it. I guess for some reason, what goes in this uh, something that goes in car batteries. So now there's a new EV, you know, obviously a big EV push, um, but now they ran out of that material because there's more going into batteries. So it's just kind of one thing after yeah. another with that. They have secured the material now, and we're going to see some improvement there. So that's kind of wow. that's the uh, what's going on. It sounds like you solve one problem and then you, you bump into another one. I guess that's uh, that. Yeah, it's it's just, yeah. We see that all the time. <laughs> you call it you call it whack a mole. Yeah. The other thing that's been interesting is we. Um, We'll struggle with on the labor end of things. There's just there's simply not enough mechanical contractors out there. Your your heating and your plumbing and, and electricians and my goodness, we hope that every young person that would have an opportunity that maybe isn't sure of what they want to do go into the trades. There's just great opportunities there and uh, you make a lot of money. You don't have to have much debt and uh, you, you can do extremely well. So we would we run into a problem where we have a whole bunch of homes lined up. And we only have one, you know, one contractor to go through all those homes. And it takes them about a week. So, with our help of purchasing, uh, Kathy Pierce and Jason, Jason, we uh, got a whole bunch of mechanical contractors. All right, that's that's great. Now we're uh, maybe you know we paid a little more for a few of them, but we were able to get a bunch of homes done. So that was that was great. Well, now we can't insulate them because we only have so much insulation and just so on and so forth. It goes right down the line. Don't, don't, only too many trim carpenters. Now we're having struggling to get trim. So it's this, that, exactly. The whack-a-mole problem. You solve one, there's one more that's right around the corner. I think one uh, particular uh, component of, of, of home building that, that gets looked at and that's maybe a little bit of a, a symbol of the overall direction of cost is lumber. It's just for us novices, you know, us on the finance side, like mm -hmm. we have no idea, like everything that goes into into a house. But you see a lot of the lumbers, contracts and futures and whatnot. Where is it like how has that like evolved over the course of the year? Like where was it? Where is it now? And what are you predicting? And really, at the end of the day, lumber, like what percentage of house cost really is lumber? Is it kind of overstated? Do we give it more credit than it than it deserves? I've always been a little curious, so I want to hear from the pro. Your overall 
frame, uh, framing labor, truss, and lumber is is the largest cost codes in in, in the uh, in in building. Okay. And the lumber volatility, we'll just go all the way back to um, pre-pandemic. So in April of 2020, we, we kind of chart one house, you know, for lumber and, and kind of where, where that's at. That way we're always gauging that one home knowing from our, where our percentages are. That home in April of 2020 cost about uh, 25,000 just for lumber. Okay. Not, not trusted, just lumber. So fast forward to the high, high lumber, that home cost 70,000. Mm. So, I mean, that kind of swing, it, 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 you just sure. can't hardly to tolerate it. And right now we're settled back in somewhere in the probably 40s. So okay. it's kind of stabilized. And what it seems like for what Lumber's doing right now is they found this, you know, the mills found this nice little spot and it's about that six, 600 per thousand board feet. And they're trying to hold that mark. They, they're, they're profitable there. It's dipped down even into the high fours, but now it's back up around the six. So that's kind of going to be that point where six is the new, the new norm, where it used to be three and four. Speaking of lumber, are you able to source it? Is there is there a backlog for that too? Like appliances and other things? Can you actually get lumber to start projects? I guess you, you hear about the cost of lumber so much and obviously that's a function of supply and demand. But if you're willing to pay, mm -hmm. can you actually even even get it? There, it was a struggle there for a while where it was the high high because a lot of the, a lot of the yards that we work with, you know, they didn't want to load up on all that inventory. So there would be basically well, we're waiting until this this, this uh, truck comes in, and that was a problem. That is no longer a problem anymore. Okay. There, it's plentiful. It seems like there's plenty of uh, panels out there too, as far as sheet sheathing. But I would say right now, lumber is not our problem. It's still kind of the uh, lab more labor piece than anything. Okay. Well, we'll keep talking about problems. Mortgage rates. My my side of the universe. Um, Needless to say, we're up significantly from where we were t at the start of the year, where the Fed was obviously very involved buying mortgage-backed securities and really, you know, buying down the rates. You saw the pandemic going on, and, and obviously that's all done now. And we saw the big spike. I, I truly believe we're kind of past the worst as far as long-term mortgage rates. Fed funds rate will go up a little bit, but um, I, I think we're we're you know still we're down off the highs the conventional 30 year was was up over six there for a while and we're down uh closer to five than we are to six so that's almost 100 basis point improvement which in normal times would be celebrated but now it's, it's still it's still up from where it was so it doesn't get the <laughs> the credit that it's maybe deserving and people are like well are, are people not buying houses because those rates are so high and i feel like affordability um people can afford those mortgages or they can qualify it doesn't mean they necessarily want it and i feel like it maybe is the last kind of straw that broke the camel's back where it was just everything's getting more expensive and it's taking longer and then oh by the way your payments you know 40 percent higher and they're like ah i'm just gonna wait so I, I don't think we're the the primary cause but i think we're co-conspirators in the whole deal but we're inside of Robert Thomas, you know, what's the temperature on where the buyers are at right now? I mean, are they there and they're just waiting? Or do you feel that, you know, it's maybe going to be a more prolonged, slower period? Or what, you know, maybe what's your thought of just kind of what you're seeing? What's always interesting, and I, I, I listened to your mortgage minute and how you talk right. about it. Historically, these are really good rates. Well, they are. They're amazing. My first house was nine. You know, and granted, the cost was uh, yeah. significantly less, but it was still nine percent. But um, there are still buyers out there. They're just the ones that are out are definitely a little more serious right now. And again, with different programs, typically we're able to find a solution. You know, through you guys with for someone. Um, it's just it almost feels like we're back in the old cyclical selling season where summer takes a pretty good dip, you know, because it yeah. wasn't normal to, to be spiking up for us where all of a sudden we'd have 25 homes sold in a month. That's, in the summer, that just wasn't normal. I think we're gonna see a nice, hopefully a nice little uptick in the fall. Our cost now where it was just constantly going up, 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 it's now flattened up. We haven't had to, I mean, we, We'll see where it all goes for the fall. We're really excited for the fall parade. We got a lot of uh, beautiful models in, and we're just hoping the people start coming out. We are, even now in August, we're still getting people out through the doors. The traffic, though, is down significantly. You bring up a good point. You kind of 
with pandemic, like everything was thrown off, like the mm -hmm. cyclical nature, everybody was, at, you know, not going on trips and doing things. So they were out looking at houses. There was a lot of activity. So yes, yeah, summer mm -hmm. for both the home building and finance markets, you know, people were traditionally taking vacations, doing things. They weren't really interested in making big financial decisions. Yeah. So I mean, and we didn't panic over that right. because we knew the fall was coming in September. Mm -hmm. Historically, it's always been a great, uh, just a great month, like for tradition mortgage. And I think for the home building companies, because yeah. it kicks off with the fall parade yeah. and everybody's ready to get after it. Kids are back in school, yeah. so parents have a little more time and sanity to kind of invest into uh, looking at, at new homes. So in, in speaking of the new homes, what are you seeing as far as uh, the delivery time frames? Um, because again, with these supply chain uh, challenges, even to get things started, but once uh, once a hole's dug in the ground and maybe, uh, you know, I know, you know, smaller price points, maybe a little bit faster, but maybe for, you know, a couple different price points, what are you seeing now for kind of a total cycle time? Total cycle time for us, for our different collections, um, the, the, the tradition collection is our, our larger product. And that cycle time is probably close to eight months from the time you dig it to the time you're completing it. Heritage are closer from six to seven and then maybe get into a village or villa where that can be six. Now we're, we're laser focused as things improve. I mean, there's nothing more important to us than building a great quality product, but cycle time is so important too. It, it, it's very frustrating for a person to go by their home and, and well, we're, we're waiting on mechanical roughings and, and you say that same message over and over again. We are laser focused on bringing that cycle time back to where it was normal from the six to seven months. You know, they say uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So you guys have probably had to face, you know, a multitude of things. Like you said, it's kind of a whack-a-mole situation. Has the past year to two years had you guys change methods or change you mentioned some materials that you changed, but has has it done something more permanently? Because sometimes having it have be a, a rough situation, it, it, it manifests itself eventually into a really positive one where you said, we would never have thought about that, but for the fact that we didn't have something and now we're doing something that we probably should have done. So is there anything that you can think of or a few things you can think of that have, have created that situation in, in building? It's really the use of materials. I mean, when something, when you don't, when you can't get something, you, well, what can we do? Mm -hmm. So there's been so many times where we've had to do that throughout this. And um, on the labor end of things, for instance, we, we, we saw when we were building these really large homes, they're really complicated homes some of the framing labor that we had, we just didn't feel like we had a whole lot of control over. So we talked to uh, one of our main framers that I've had a connection with for a long time, Mike Rowe. Um, we, we approached him and said, hey, would you be interested in starting up a framing company and just kind of working exclusively with us and, uh, and be employees? So he, he has now almost 30 guys working for him and we have some control now. We put him on all the complicated stuff we feel so good about what we're turning out because he, he's behind it and the guys that we have are behind it. So that's one of the ways that we've, again, taken a little control, had to get a little creative, had to take some risk, but I think it's really paying off. Looking forward now, we're, we're here in the uh, first part of, of August. So what, like just trying to look in the crystal ball, the Paul Grayball crystal ball here, looking forward to the next, you know, six to eight months, nine months. Are you, are you hopeful for significant material improvements in the overall supply chain? Are you thinking it's going to be nibbling around the, the edges or fits and starts? But I mean, and just based on all of your experience and years and years in being in this business and kind of seeing what you've been seeing, maybe, you know, give us your, your, your thoughts of, of what we, we could potentially hope for or not hope for um, as we go into like through next spring because everybody's I mean I'm I'm a mortgage banker and everybody's asking me this question it's like t talk to the home building pros I don't know I can talk to you about interest rates and I do think in that I do think that we've seen the peak and we're, we're we've trended down and I think we're I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll see some material improvements um, as we move forward into 2023, we're already seeing some some inflation reports that, that just that came out this week, CPI and PPI, that were uh, lower than expectations. Holy cow. Um, so it, that part, I think, is coming. But, but what's on your end? What do you, what do you think? And I won't hold you well, to well, this well, stuff, but well, just yeah, best yeah. guesses. Well, what's interesting is I never once in my life looked at a 10-year treasury yield 
and now I look at it daily. And it's just, it's crazy. I mean, why, you know, you just kind of obsess about it. It moves all the time. Um, I think in fourth quarter, material things are, are going to improve. And I've heard that from different economists too. And I, I think honestly, we'll have stability next year. I, hopefully as builders are slowing down. And, and again, every report we see is, you know, it, it starts could be down even 20% nationwide. So that naturally the, the shelves are going to be restocked with stuff. Uh, now it's really labor. It, we really hope that, you know, we can build enough to keep the labor that we have going because that is really important. We don't need another big loss of labor because uh, when it is going to improve uh, again, you know, the, the time could be a year, could be two years, but we just really need to keep all that labor moving. The supply is going to fix itself. I'm predicting fourth quarter we're going to start seeing it by next year. It'll be better. Well, uh, again, a lot of a lot of great information there, I, and, and you guys naturally have uh, faced a few obstacles, found a way to hurdle them, or go around them, or or you know change the hurdle. I don't know. It depends. Yeah, you guys, that, that is probably the the most operative word there is is creative. So. Uh, best of luck in in continuing to be creative because I'm sure that there's going to be another whack-a-mole in your way, and uh, and and as you said, even with things improving, you know that 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 does change that does change the landscape as well. So uh, we will revisit uh, this conversation with you at some point here because uh, of course uh, it's always great to get an update from you, Paul. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, participation again. Um, and, and we look forward to talking to you again. Thanks again, Paul. It's really great to kind of hear your side of things with your expertise. And I can't say uh, how, enough how impressed I am with what you've been able to, to uh, accomplish at Thank Robert you. Thomas Holmes. The, the Reggie Awards, the building, you know, it's kind of the Academy Awards, like an Oscar. And like you come down to these corporate offices and they're like the whole wall is full of them. I mean, so obviously they are being recognized uh, by professionals in the industry as, as, as the A-teamer and, and certainly the client satisfaction piece. So despite just an absolute nasty bout of, of curveballs that come your way here over, over the past, well, even the last few years, yeah, you know, uh, you, you've done a wonderful job and, and proud to be uh, part of the organization and uh, serving it from the financing side. So best of luck thank, to you. Thank you guys. Good to see you both.